Right, here's another episode of Tidal's Maths. Right, this is the... which one is this for? Maths Genie? Yeah, this is the Maths Genie uh, per, predicted paper for paper 2. Um, we're going to see how this one goes. Let's put our name on the front. This is Tidal's Maths. Just call me Andrew. Right, let's have a look what's going on in this paper. <coughs> Yes, on the first page, just all the uh, information, the um, the formula sheet that you're going to be given in the exams this year. Uh, the sine rule, I don't like that side version of the sine rule. So my version of the sine rule is A sine B equals B sine A. So that's what I do for the sine rule. And uh, that's soccer tour there. So S O, uh, why is it A C? Oh, I know, S O H, so car, and then tour. Um, my head department doesn't like uh, that bit. I uh, like the triangles. You want to see to write this one and rearrange it, but uh, each their own. Um, and that's it, really. So that's the formula sheet. Let's have a look. Right, so starting off on number one, uh, we've got probability questions. So as soon as you see this probability table, first thing you should be doing is seeing what you've got here all together. So we just add them together on the calculator. Every All your addition should be on calculator. You shouldn't be doing much in your head at all, because uh, you're going to make that mistakes in your head. Plus 0.09. Uh, equals, so we've got uh, 0.48, so 0.48 there, so that's what we have in that list. Uh, that makes us uh, 0.52 short, doesn't it? So 0.52 short of the whole one, so you just do one take away that thing, uh, and you get the 0.52, that's how much we're missing in this table. Let's have a look. Uh, the probability that it lands on a 6 is three times the probability that it lands on a 1, so if we call the 1 an x, this is 3x over here, okay? And then 3x and the x, oh sorry, x and the 3x is 4x, so 4x must equal the 0.52, so x must equal uh, 0.52 divided by 4, uh, and you've got 0 0.13, 0 0.13, so that means you've got 0 0.13 up here for the probability of landing on a 1, and we need 3 of them, so 0 0.39 over here for the 6. Uh, Fred rolls a dice 200 times, work out an estimate that he would put on a 6, so now I'm just going to do 200 times by 0 0.39, which is nothing, which is 78, isn't it? So, um, times by, I don't know, 0 0.39 times 200 is 78, uh, and put 78 in the answer sheet. Okay, and that's all it is, and so opening question. This next one, um, first of all, it's a good to look at the actual graph and know what shape it is. So x squared is a u-shaped graph, but it's a minus x squared, so we're looking for an upside down u. Uh, so this is a minus x squared graph. Uh, it's actually called a parabola, but that's by the way. Upside down u loop. Um, and we, what we know about the u-shape is it's going to repeat itself. It's going to be a repetition. Now, we haven't got any repetitions so far. So what we're going to do on our calculator is just set up the equation, but we're going to put brackets where... Uh, the letter is uh, instead, so let's do it on the calculator now. So we've got two back of bracket. No, we haven't. We've got two back of bracket. Take away six. Take away bracket bracket squared. So I've just set up the equation. If I do it right and change it to a plus, that'll be useful, won't it? To delete plus. So I just put a plus there instead. Because that's what it actually says in the question. Uh, there plus. Um, so that's what it looks like with the brackets instead. Now we just run the numbers. Now I will start at the right hand side and work my way backwards and I'm hoping I don't have to get the negatives but I might do. Let's have a look. So we'll put the 4 in the brackets to kick off with. So 4 and a 4 in that one and then we write in the minus 2. Now there's no repetition yet so now we change it to 3. So just click backwards on the calculator and delete a 3 and then go back over here. Oops. Uh, delete to put a 3 in there. Uh, and now I've got three. Now we're on the repetition stage, stage. So that's repeating itself. So this one's going to be a six, and this one is going to be a minus two down there because it repeats uh, outwards. So I've only got to do the one now. So put the one in there. Delete one. Go back across here. Uh, delete one, and then seven. So we've got a seven in the middle there. So there's our table. Uh, we set it up, so I'll go for the equation now. So minus 2 and minus 2 is down the bottom. Minus 1 and 3 is here. Uh, 0 and 6 is here. 1 and 7. And now we're going to come back down. Uh, 2 and 6. 3 and um, 3. And then 4 and minus 2 is down here. So there you can see the U shape coming on. So we now draw this in. So come up here. Try to hit the points that you've drawn. Uh, and then don't forget to curl from on here, uh, so we curl over, and then we come back down, and we hit our point. Okay, uh, so there's that graph, and then we've got, use the graph to estimate solutions of this thing. Well, this thing is our graph we've drawn, 
uh, we drew y equals this lot and so all I've done is change the y equal to 0 so we're looking for where y equals 0 on our graph and that's this point here and it's also this point over here so the x value is about minus 1.7 ish uh, minus 1.7 or 3.7 is where I'm looking at on my graph so it's about those two points Next question, we've got um, square root of this thing, it's just a straightforward calculator job. Uh, you can see the square root goes up everything, so I'm going to start with the square root sign, then I'm going to press fraction sign, now I'm going to type this in. So tan of 20, now the calculator automatically opens a bracket on the tan, it's not in the picture, but you just have to close your bracket there. Plus the sign of 25, close your bracket, go on the bottom, tan 25, close bracket, uh, take away the sign of 20. Close your bracket. So just check it looks exactly like that one. So you've got tan plus sine 25 20. Tan 25 takes sine 20. Press go uh, and you've got this thing, write all the figures. So 2.5157069131 is all the figures. It says round two decimal places, two decimal places. So first I'm going to write the three decimal places. So it's 2.515 going off. And there's three decimal places. That makes it easy to round the two. Uh, 2.5. Uh, two is where I'll finish. Next one, standard form question, but it's on a calculator, so let's go to calculator. I've got bracket 2.16 times 10 to the power of negative 5. Come out the bracket, out that thing, uh, divided by then the bracket 2.5 times 10 to the power of negative 4. Uh, close bracket and press equals, and I've got the 0.0. .0 equals 0 0.0864 is the answer. Uh, write your answer in standard form. Now with decimals in standard form I always find it easy because you just write this number 8.64 8.64 times 10 to the power of minus which indicates you're going to do uh, decimals and then it's just the zeros so one two. That's a dangerous uh, thing to tell people because then if it's another number if it's 86400 then it wouldn't be 8.64 times 10 squared it would be 8.64 times 10 to the power of 4 weirdly, so you can only count the zeros when it's a decimal, that's how I do it. Or you're just moving the decimal point twice, bop, bop, bop. Or you get told off for that, because you've got to move the number, not the decimal point. What's the thing you're getting told off for? Density of cordials. So density, I see density, Think straight thing I'm thinking of is DMV, so I always draw the triangle DMV. Um, density mass volume. Density of orange is 1.21 per cubic centre. The density of carbonate of uh, water is 1.01 per cubic centre. If a drink has a volume of 280 uh, in the ratio of mix by mixing one part cordial to seven parts water. So you've got 1 to 7. Uh, 1 and 7, 1 plus 7 equals 8. 280 divided by 8 equals, I'm going to calculate to do that, 280 divided by 8, uh, 35. And then 1 times 35 and 7 times 35 is 35 to 200 and what's that going to be? 45 I think. 35 times by 7 is 245. 245. Okay. So this means you've got, uh, this is the orange, one part orange and seven parts water. So that's orange and that's water there, one of the W's. So this is your volume of water and that's your volume of, um, sorry, orange and this is your volume of water. Uh, next thing, uh, we're going to go focus on the orange because we know uh, the density of the orange is uh, 1.21. We know the volume of orange is 35. What we don't know is the mass of the orange. And when it's like this way, you just multiply them together. So the mass is equal to 1.21 times 35 equals 42.35 grams. So that's the mass of the water, the mass of the, uh, sorry, the orange, mass of the water now, so it's the water, uh, so the volume, sorry, what have we got, we've got the density of the water is 1.01, 1.01, we've got the mass, and we've got the, um, the volume of the water is 245, and we multiply these together, so we get the mass of the water is 1.01 times by 245, equals um, oh, plus SD, 247.45 grams of water and this gives us an overall mass so the mass of the drink is that one plus the other one plus 42.35 that was wrong uh, so try that again 247.45 plus 42.35 that's why do I keep pressing the wrong button there 42.35 just not looking at the calculator I think 
So you have to have 247.45, 42.35 equals, and they got 289.8 grams. So 289 grams in the drink. Uh, right, so now so we were trying to find the density of the drink. So density is the mass which we've just worked out, 289.8. And then the volume of the drink is this one, 280. Is that one there? It tells us 280. 280. Uh, this is a divide question. Um, so this thing equals 289.8 divided by 280 equals 1.435, and that's grams per cubic centimeters, which is written in the answer slot. Okay, so let's start with one six. Uh, we've got two triangles. A B. A B is nine. B to D is 13, and C to D is 4. So that's what we've got there. We're trying to find the perimeter of the whole thing. So we've got two triangles. We're going to separate them out. We've actually got three, three triangles there, but there's two main ones. First triangle I've got is this thing. This is 13, this is 9, this is a right angle. So it's clearly going to be Pythagoras' question. Pythagoras says that that one's squared. So 13 squared is equal to the other two squared, so 9 squared plus, and we'll call this I know, x or something, so x squared. Uh, that's 169 equals 81 plus x squared. So x squared, just take that off 169. 169 take away 81, uh, 88. So x must equal the square root of 88. Let's have a look. Square root of 88 equals 2 root 22 or 9.38 something other 9.38 whatever okay so now I've got the other triangle where I've got 9 on that side this is 9.38 up here uh, so this one's going to be dot 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 uh, this is going to be 13 isn't it 13.38 whatever okay and work out the perimeter I need this side now now uh, if we call that side C oh, I call it X that was weird uh, so we'll call that side C. So it says C squared is 9 squared plus the 13.38 uh, squared, which equals, let's go for that one. So that's just that one plus 4 is the 13 and a bit. So that's 13.38. So we want that one squared plus 9 squared equals 260. So 260.04, wherever. Uh, so C must equal the square root of that one, square root. Of the answer is 16.125 going off forever. So now I've got 16.125 uh, at the top there. 16. Point, just put this on the picture. 125 going off forever. Uh, and then I'm just going to add these things together to get the perimeter. Um, so it's 16.125 plus 9 plus the 9.38 plus the 4. Uh, so adding them together. So the perimeter is 38. Point and I want three significant figures, so we write four, and then we round 38.5 centimetres. Okay, that's uh, question six. Question seven. There is a number rounded to one decimal place. So if it's rounded to one decimal place, it must be 9.35 to 9.45. Nice, easy uh, error interval question. The only further version, this one is a truncated question, where it would be 9.4 to 9.5 if it was just chopped off at some point. Usually something to do with calculators. This is looking like a soccer toe question. So we've got opposite side over here. We've got the hypotenuse here. And we want the adjacent is going to be down the bottom. We're trying to work out AB. So we've got O and we've got H. So if you look at your soccer toe, S O H C A H and T O A. Remember that's on the formula sheet if you can remember it. Uh, these are the what we know. This is what we want to know. So O and H are the things we're after. So we're looking for this one. Uh, so that is the sine of the angle. So sine of 38. The opposite side is A B, which we don't know yet. And the adjacent, uh, the hypotenuse, sorry, is 16. This is just a straightforward multiplication uh, to get A to B. So A B is um, sine of 38 times by 16. Uh, which is 9.85, something like that, so 9.850, because we're going to two decimal places, so we write three, then we round, 9.85 is the answer. Next one, a, a box plot, and I think about a box plot, uh, you've got five key points, you've got the minimum point, you've got a lower quartile, you've got the median, we've got the upper quartile, and we've got the maximum point, and if we just check this is right, Holly's drew the box plot for the information in the table. The box plot is not correct, so this is wrong. So let's just check those points in here. So the minimum, the least height, 144. Is it 144? Yep, that looks like 144 there, so that's good. Interquartile range, now that's uh, different between these two, so that's not that's not really useful for me just yet. 161, that looks right. So that looks 161 looks right. 
the upper quartile 174, 174, that looks right, and then the range is 42, the range is the difference between these two. So let's do uh, the range first, so the range goes is 42, so we need from 144, so 144, uh, which was the least height, plus the 42 is 186 is the uh, greatest height, or max height, so the max point, and here we can see this is at 185, which is wrong. Okay, uh, so the minimum, maximum height, max height, should be at 186. Uh, so they've got 185. The inner quartile range, remember, is from here to here. Now we've checked the upper quartiles, right? So if we come downwards, inner quartile range to get to there. So we're on 174. 174. Take away the 19. Equals, calculate the job, 174 take away 19, a bit awkward, uh, 155. So this should be the low quartile, low quartile should be there. So this one's at 154, so 154, which is wrong because it should be 155. So that's right, that one, the low quartile uh, should be at 155. Okay, uh, abbreviate low quartile, I guess it just takes too long to write out. Mathematicians being lazy. Oh, this looks like a weird one. Right, so uh, there's a bunch of ways of doing this question. Um, a group of people did a test. The number of children who took the test uh, versus the number of adults who took the test is 3 to 5. Now, the first thing I thought was uh, there's 8 there, 3 and 5. The number of children who passed the test, the number of children who failed the test was 4 to 1, which is 5. Uh, and the number of adults who passed the test, the number of adults who failed the test is 72, which is 9. Uh, okay, so my first thought on this question, you can do this using fractions, um, which is a bit less intuitive, I think. Um, for me, I want a number that I can then split up, and the way we get the numbers is just multiply these together. So 8 times 5 times 9 uh, turns out to be 360. 8 times 40, 49. Well, let's just do it on the calculator. 8 times 5 times 9 is 360. So if I say there's 360 people in this test, now there could be different numbers, right? It's got to be a multiple of 360. So it could be 360, it could be 720, it could be 3,600 people in the test. I don't know how many is in the actual test. I'm just going to use this number to try to figure out what fraction it is because the fraction won't matter. If you have more people, the fraction will just cancel down. Uh, right, so where we go? The number of people who took the test, the number of adults who took the test. So let's just do that one. So children to adults. So you've got 3 to 5. Um, so that's 3 plus 5 equals 8. Uh, 360 divided by 8 is 45. And then you've got 3 times 45, 3 times 45, and 5 times 45, uh, which is 135 and 225. Okay, I should be using the calculator doing all this one and trying to speed up the process a little bit. So now I know there's 100 in my scenario, in my 360 scenario. There's 135 children, right? And there's uh, there's 225 adults. So now we go for the children who passed and the adults and the children who failed. So now we've got uh, 4 to 1. It, uh, you get 4 plus 1 equals 5. So this is children and adults. And then you've got uh, so this pass and fail. Uh, we've got uh, 4 plus 1 is 5. This number of kids is 135, remember? So 135 divided by 5 equals, what's that, 27? 27 and then you've got 4 times 27 4 times 27 to 1 times 27 equals 108 and 27 okay so that's the number of children who pass that's the number of children who fail this test adults who pass the test and uh, for adults who fail so pass and fail for adults this time so you've got 7 to 2 so we go on 7 plus 2 equals 9 the number of adults we had is 225 so 225 divided by 9 equals 25 I believe uh, is 25 then we've got 7 times 25 to 2 times 25 which is 175 to uh, 50 okay that's the adults who pass adults who fail and then what fraction of people pass the test remember I, I said there was 360 here so the total pass so the pass now is the 108 kids who passed plus the 175 adults who passed which is 283 people who pass uh, and then you've got 283 out of 360 and that's game over for that question okay now if you did this with um, a different number on the bottom then it would turn out to be 
Um, like if it was 720 there, that would be twice as much, um, whatever that is. Uh, the other way to do the question is just to mess about with fractions to say 3 out of 8 uh, and then 5 out of 8. This is 4 out of 5, 1 out of 5, 7 out of 9, 2 out of 9, and do multiplications of fractions and add fractions together. Uh, and you do end up with the same number if you try to plan about that work, or you should do. Seven cleaners took three hours and 20 minutes to clean all the rooms in the hotel. So when I say this sort of setup, what I want to do is I want to know how long it's going to take one cleaner. Now my issue here is it's three hours and 20 minutes, which is a bit of a pain. Time's a bit of a pain to play about with when you're doing multiplications and divisions. So I'm going to change this into just minutes. Um, so to start with, that's three times 60 is 180 plus 20. <coughs> so we've got 200 minutes uh, for seven uh, cleaners to do the whole job, which is not a very nice number actually. Uh, so one cleaner. One cleaner will take uh, 200. Uh, seven cleaners do it that fast. Uh, so one cleaner is going to take seven times long. So times that by seven is going to be 1400 minutes. That's how long one cleaner takes. Uh, four cleaners, four cleaners then is going to be 1400 uh, divided by four, which is 350 minutes which is uh, 350 is 60, because the 560 is a 300. So we've got uh, five hours, five hours and 50 minutes to clean. So that's how long it takes them to clean the place. Uh, and then you've got each cleaner's played 11 pound 50 for each hour or part of an hour. So they get five lots of that plus another one, because that's part of an hour, isn't it? So they get six lots of the 11 pound 50. So we've got 6 times £11.50, and we just got our calculator now, get that one. 6 times £11.50 equals £69 is how much they're going to get paid each. Uh, we invest some money in our account for three years. We paid 3.9% for the first two years, then we paid some of the interest rate, which we don't know yet, uh, for the third year, but we don't know we end up there. So let's set it up. So we've got 7500 We would multiply by 3.9% is 100%. Plus 3.9 percent is 103.9 percent. So we're going to multiply by 1.039. Now notice that this is the way your percentage is that you uh, you make in 3.9 there. So we multiply by 1.039 um, for two years. So we times that by two. It's compound interest. And then we've got some other multiplication which we don't know. It's not R. Uh, we've got some other amount here, another percentage here. I'm going to call it P. Um, and that's going to give me 19. 307.23 okay so let's just work this bit out so we've got 17500 uh, times by 1.039 squared uh, this thing is 18891.6175 lots of p is that 19307.23 uh, i can divide through to get p so p must equal uh, 19307.6175 Two three divided by that last thing is one point zero two one nine 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 eight three seven. Okay, so this is my multiplier. So the percentage uh, is actually a hundred and two point one nine 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 eight three seven. That's uh, that that is as a percent, and the value of R, the interest, is this bit here. 2.1 uh, but then there's a 9 coming after it so I'm going to go with 2.2 percent is the interest uh, rate okay 100 percent plus the interest rate is you get then divide by 100 gets you a multiplier next question number 13 uh, in a larger shape with a scale factor of minus 200 zero, zero. so what we do here zero, 00 is here so this is our center of enlargement COE is here uh, negative 2 means it's going to be twice as big where it's going to go backwards from the centre of enlargement. So from the centre of enlargement at this point is 2 back, 2 down. So enlargement of factor 2 would be 4 and 4, but going the other way is 4 this way, 4 this way is going to be here. So this point actually ends up up here. Uh, next point, let's go for this one. Uh, we've gone 5 backwards and 2 down. Uh, twice as much would be 10 and 4, but going the other way is 10 and 4 upwards is going to be to here. Uh, next point is this one for me. I'm going to go 6 and 4. So twice as much will be 12 and 8. But the other way is 12 and 8 or up here somewhere. And then the last one is, what's that, 3 and 4. So 6 and 8. But the other way, 6 and 8 is up here. So there's my new shape going there. Okay. A couple of things to notice there. 
Uh, one is you always start from your center of enlargement and go to the sharp point and then you go backwards if it's negative and For a negative one. I always do every single point if it's not negative I can get away with doing one point Okay, and then just draw a shape in twice as big three times big or whatever The other thing about uh, enlargement you could end up with a factor of a half or some a fraction So it's half the distance away and half the size and that's all uh, that would be number four um, 14 even uh, so we've got this uh, fraction thing going on uh, so what we do with uh, any sort of algebraic fractions when we're trying to tie them up is basically factorising. Um, so you've got to be able to factorise to sort this question out. Um, and divide is a KFC job. So I'm going to do a couple of things here for the first step. I'm going to factorise this one into, pull out an x from both of them. You've got x bracket x squared minus 4. And on the bottom I'm going to have 3 into x minus 2. So that's my first uh, job, factorise that one. But I'm going to keep, keep that as it is, flip this one over and change the sign to a times, so times 5 over and factorising this thing is plot an x and you get x minus 1 so we get that there uh, nothing exciting going on so far, I'm trying to look for things that can cancel off oh I can cancel an x and an x can I, so they, those two can go so that can go out and that can go out uh, anything on the bottom can cancel anything on the top in multiplication uh, there's nothing else going on at the moment. I'll look at the equation. I see this one here. This is a difference of two squares job. X squared take away the difference and four is a square number. So this one's equal to now um, X plus 2 X minus 2 X plus 2 X minus 2 over 3 lots of X minus 2 times by 5 over X minus 1. So we've got that bit going on. And look again. Look at the X minus 2's are going to wipe out. So I'm going to wipe that one out with that one. And then I'm left with, that's it, isn't it? So now I can go for the actual question. So I want 5 lots of that one, which is going to be 5x plus 10, just multiplying out the bracket. And then 3 lots of that one, over 3x minus 3. 3 times x, 3 times 1, minus 3. And that's in that format. So uh, is 5, b is 10, c is 3, and d is minus 3. Okay, don't need to write out what the values are, because it doesn't ask me what the values are. Right, there's a single fraction in its simplest form, so what we do in this type of question is uh, bid mass just says sort out the each part as you come along. So I'm going to sort out that bid and leave the negative 2 alone at the moment. So I'm going to go with, um, to sort out a fraction, we do this little, co I do this little cross uh, thing, where I multiply, multiply, and then multiply these two together uh, and see what's going on there. So I'm left with um, 3 into x minus 2 plus 2x into x minus 1 all over and multiplying the bottom one I might as well expand that out and um, you can leave it in brackets but that's something going to come in a minute so I've got x squared minus 3x plus 2 when I expand that one out so that's x squared plus 2 is there minus an x minus 2x is minus 3x on the bottom and I've got the minus 2 floating off over here uh, I'm going to expand out these brackets tidy this top bit up um, so let's go for that one. So that's 3x minus 6 plus 2x squared minus 2x. Um, take away, and then to get that to be on top of that one, I just need to multiply it by that. So I've got 2 lots of x squared minus 3x plus 2, and that's now all over x squared minus 3x plus 2. Um, tidying up a little bit here, I'm going to have 3x take away 2x is just an x. I've got a minus 6 which I can't do anything with. I've got 2x squared which I can't do anything with. And then pulling out this bracket, I've got minus 2x squared. Minus 2 times minus 3 is plus 6x. And then minus 2 times plus 2 is minus 4. All over the bottom, x squared minus 3x plus 2. Uh, so let's shove some equal signs in. And this is equal to... Uh, final stage tidying up, I can see x goes with a 6 to make 7x. Uh, the minus 4 and the minus that 4 is minus 10. Uh, the 2x squared gets cancelled out by that 2x squared. And then I'm left with nothing else and another thing on the bottom. Uh, x squared minus 3x plus 2. Uh, and then that's the end of the question. Um, I could have uh, left this bottom as the factorised one. I could have left this as x minus 1, x minus 2. Um, but I knew I was going to do uh, this multiplication to sort out the 2 as well, so that's why I expanded the brackets there. But I'm happy with that version. Number 5. Uh, five 15. I don't even know what question I want to do. 15. So the way this works is uh, you type in your calculator 2 equals, and then that comes with ANS. 
and then you set up your equation so x1 is going to be the cube root of 8 minus 3 lots of a and s which equals then you just pop back on your buttons after that so let's go for that one so i'll show you this on the calculator so we start off with uh, the 2 for the x0 getting that one it's just 2 and that's in the start in the calculator now and now we want the cube root so that one of 8 take away 3 lots of the answer uh, and that's going to give me the first one of 1 point, let's write down here, 1.25992105 uh, is the first answer. And now you just press equals again, and all the calculator is going to do when I press equals is going to take that answer and run it through this equation and put that answer there. So it's quite clever, the calculator. So press equals 1.616 or 1.5822. Press it again, 1.4. 6620026. The value of x1, x2, the solutions of an equation there, find the values of this thing. So, all I want me to do is to unpick uh, this mess. So, what we do is we just drop the n plus 1 in the n and then we just sort the equation out. So, I'm going to have dropping the x plus 1, uh, the n plus 1, I get x equals the cube root of 8 minus 3x and just drop the n. Um, cube this side to get rid of the cube root. So, we get x cubed. Uh, equals 8 minus 3x. Now move everything across. So you've got x cubed. This is going to become a plus 3x. This is going to become a takeaway 8. And then you've got equal 0, which is the format that we want. x cubed plus ax plus b. And now we can see a is 3 and b is minus 8. Okay. And that's a, that's a, an approximate solution to this thing. So if you run that number through this equation, it'll be nearly 0. Won't be exactly 0, but it'll be nearly 0. Speed time graph, so speed time graph, things we've got on speed time graph, we've got acceleration as a gradient and we've got the area underneath this is going to be our um, distance travelled, so that's what we don't, don't know. So work out the distance, an estimate for the distance the car travelled in the first 30 seconds. So the first 30 seconds is from there to there, uh, so I want to know how far it's travelled here, so what I'll do is uh, get my ruler, I've got the ruler somewhere, I need something to draw a ruler with. So an estimate for the distance is there, wash. And then we come down to here, and we've just got this triangle, haven't we, uh, going on. Uh, so I just want the area of this triangle, so that's about, where's that? That's maybe eight, maybe nine-ish. Uh, could be nine. Yep, I'm going to go with nine. So I've got 30, so I'm saying this is nine up here, times nine divided by two. And get your calculator to get to 135 here. 30 times 9 divided by 2 is 135, so I'm thinking I'm going 135 metres there. Work out an estimate of the acceleration of the car at the time 45. So 45 is here, halfway between 30 and 60. So we're at that point there. And what we want is uh, for this thing is a triangle, as a uh, a line, a tangent line to there. So we just draw a line. Now I always find the bigger the line, the more accurate you're going to be. So I'm going for that one. So I'm going from about here to oh, where am I going to? Let's go to about here. I'm just cheating a little bit with my line. Uh, so I'm going to there. So there's my triangle. Okay. Because the gradient is a rise over the run. Um, so I want to know how far it's r driven across and how far up it's gone. That's what I'm looking for. So going across ways. Well, I've got to figure out the units now. So we've got 60, 70, 80. Uh, 90, 60, 70. So, what was that? that? That let me just go from there. So, there's a three sign there. Okay, that was easy to see it from over here. There's 10 little marks, and each one's a three to get from zero to 30. Okay, that was easier. Uh, so, I've got 60, 63, 60, um, 6, 69, 72. So, I've got 72 is the run across and the rise up. So, what's a rise up going in? Um, <clears throat> it's got 5 between 2, so it's 0.4 or something, isn't it? It's a bit weird. Uh, so we've gone 0 0.4, 0 0.8, and then we've got 10 to get from 6 to 16. So that looks like 10.8 going upwards. So my gradient here, the acceleration of car, remember acceleration is just gradient, is the rise. So it's 10.8 over 72. Um, so that's equal to on the calculator. So I've got 10.8 divided by 72. Uh, and I've got an acceleration of 0 0.15 metres per second squared at that point. Just rise over the run uh, for gradient. 
45 seconds. Let's just jump check. So I'm trying to get to that mark. Probably a little bit out. Uh, but you get you get a um, there's a margin of error in that one. Okay, so we've got slightly different tone about it. First five terms of a sequence. Let's have a look what's going on with the sequence. So we are adding um, three there. Uh, this one we're adding seven on. This one we're adding on eleven, and this one I'm guessing fifteen, because it looks like we're going to add four there. Four and four. Second level down, just divide by two, and we get two lots of the square numbers. So two lots of the square numbers. Four divided by two is two. Uh, the square numbers are one, four, nine, sixteen. So we've got one. 4, 9, 16, and 25. Now we want two lots of them. So we've got 2, uh, 2 4s are 8, 2 9s are 18, 2 16s are 32, and 2 25s are 50. And we need to take them out of this sequence at the top. So I've got minus 4, take away 2 is minus 6. Minus 1, take away 8 is minus 7. 6, take away minus 18 is minus 12. Have I gone wrong here? I'm going to turn out. Minus 1, take away 8 is minus 9. That's better. Minus 9. So let's try again. 6 take away 18 is minus 12. 17 take away that one is minus 15. And 32 from that one is minus 18. So this looks like it's going down in 3s now all the time. So something like the 3 times table. So minus 3 times table. Uh, but the minus 3 times table is minus 3, minus 6, minus 9, minus 12, and minus... Uh, 15 and to get from this one to that one you have to take away another 3 from there to get to there don't you so I've got to take away another 3 so our final formula is 2n squared minus 3n because it was the th like 3 that goes down in 3 so like the 3 times table we're going backwards and then uh, take away 3 from that and you get to this formula so let's just do a quick check so is the fifth one 32? So it is 2 lots of 5 squared, take away 3 lots of 5, take away 3. What's that? So that's 50. Uh, so yeah, 50 there. 25 times 2 is that one. Take away 15, take away 3, which is uh, 35, take away 3, which is 32. So that looks right to me. So it looks good to me. Uh, one, so just double check what I was doing there. Area of ADC, where's ADC? ADC, the bottom one is 58. Okay, uh, work out the length of AB, work out over here. All right, so that's like a long journey, this one. So we've got our triangle, first triangle looks something like this one, 102 in there, we've got 12 there, and we've got the area of 58 inside here. I'm gonna call this side A, uh, because the area of the triangle is half AB sine C, and we know that's gotta be 58. Okay. Um, it's a bit of a horrible question, this one. A bit of a work to go. Uh, so we've now got a half of A, which I don't know, times by 12 sine of C equals 58. Half of 12 is 6A. Oh, we knew, we knew sine of C was 102. 102. So 6A uh, times by sine of 102. Let's look at that one. So sine 102 equals 0 0.978 uh, times 0. 978 something other equals 58 so 6a must equal let's just divide by that one so 58 divided by the answer is 59.29 whatever uh, so a must equal that one divided by 6 equals 9.8826 going off forever okay so next one so now I'm, I'm trying to get to this triangle here and I'm trying to get this top triangle so I need to find this side now um, so going back to this triangle, we've got um, 102 in here, we've got 12 here, and now we've got 9.8826 whatever here, uh, and we're going to call this one A this time, and this now becomes a cosine rule, so A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A, and that's on the front page if you forget anyway. Um, so where we're we going, so we're going to have equals uh, 12 squared plus 9.88, whatever it is, uh, squared, take away 2 times 12 times 9.88, whatever, cos of 102, which equals, let's go for that one now, so now we've got 12 squared plus the answer squared, take away 2 times 12 times the answer times cos 102, close the bracket, Equals 290.979 going off. Uh, so A is equal to the square root of that one. So square root, which is 17.058 going off forever. 
So finally, we're now inside of our main triangle now. That's a 17 bit there, so that's 17.05. 5, whatever, 8, something. Uh, so let's just draw that triangle now. So now we're going 1, 1, 2. We're on 51, and we've got our 17.058, and we're trying to find this side, which I'll now call A. So I'll have to use the A3 down. No, that's a bit weird. Maybe we should use different letters. Uh, this is a sign roll job, so we've got... A sine B, this is my version of sine rule, equals B sine A. Uh, so we're going to call this angle A because it's opposite that side. This is B, this is uh, capital B. So A sine of 112 equals B, which is our 17.058 thing, sine of A, which is 51. And so A, our angle, is 7.058 7 in our angle. That's the side, isn't it? Sine. 51 divided by sine 112 which equals let's go for that one so we've got uh, answer times by sine 51 divided by the sine of 115 equals and I finally got an answer of 14.62 something other 14.6 to one decimal place Wow, that was some journey in that one. Five marks should be like hundreds of marks of that question. Right there. What's going on here? The surface area sphere is that one. The surface area of the middle sphere is that one. Uh, the ratio of the radius to the radius is that thing. Where got the ratio of the volume to the volume? Okay. So the thing about spheres is they're similar shapes. So it's hiding the fact we've got similar shapes here. Similar shapes. So you've been hidden here. Now as soon as I see similar shapes, the first thing I want is a scale factor the scale factor for area and the scale factor for volume that's the the three connectors so if i work on a b we know the area area one is 25 to um, 36 as a ratio uh, and to go upwards we just square root so that's a square root to get upwards which is going to be five to six and then to go so that's a square root sign uh, where we want to the radius so that's the radius one isn't it so we only oh, we're trying to get the volume one as well um, the radius of, oh, okay, let's just go to volume now. So volume going down to the bottom, we want a cubit. So we've got 125, and the uh, volume one for this one is going to be um, 6 cubed is 216. Uh, might have been better just join them together before I kicked off on that bit. Never mind. Uh, the radius of uh, sphere B to the radius of the sphere C. So we've got the radius is a 2 to 3, which means going to the bottom, we're going to have cube is 8, to 27 which is a bit of a pain because now I'm going to try and join these two things together it was easy to see when the other one um, so that's uh, a B and this is uh, B the C so we're going to try and link the B so does a go into 216 for a start 216 divided by 8 yes 27 so we times these both by 27 now then we get 216 2 what's 27 uh, times 27 729 so now we have A, B, C, A to B to C is 125 to 216 to 729. So that's our ratio for volumes. Uh, and the question says, work out the ratio of the volume A to the volume. So we want these two. So it's 125 to 729. And that's the end of that question. Uh, could have made that a little bit easier. Never mind. I do like histograms. Histograms are just all about rectangles. Uh, so the area is the frequency in a rectangle. This is called the frequency density, which I often call the height, and this is uh, the width of the rectangle, isn't it? And the width times that one gives you the area. Uh, that's all the histogram is. So if I just quickly look at these ones, that's obviously 2.5, uh, and that's 1.6. So in here, uh, I've got 2.5 times 1.6. Let's just work that out. 2.5 times 1.6 is there's four uh, trees in there. Uh, 2.5 times 2.4, 2.5 times 2.4 is uh, 6 in this one, 5 times 3.2, 5 times 3.2 is the 16 trees in here, and this one is uh, 5, 10 times 1.1, 10 times 1.1 is 11 isn't it, uh, so we've got 11 in there, so it's nice to just see the numbers. 12% of the trees in the park have a height between 2.5 metres there and 5 metres Okay, so 12% are represented by 6. So 12% is uh, 6 trees. Now we want to get this to 100%, so we know how many trees are in the park. 
so let's go. We can what can we do? We can divide by six to get one tree, can't we? So two percent is one tree. So a uh, hundred percent times up by fifty is fifty trees. So what I do? I divide it by two. I divide it by six. Sorry. And then I times by 50 to get to 100%. So we know there should be 50 trees in the park. Um, and so far we've got, how many have we got so far? So 4 plus, oops, no, 4 plus 6 plus 16 plus 11. Uh, we've got 37 trees accounted for there, which means we are <coughs> 37, 50 take away 37 is 13 trees missing. Trees missing. So we know in here. There must be 13 trees and we are 5 wide, 13 divided by 5 is 2.6, uh, so we need to go up to 2.6, 2.5 there, so there to there, and then come down, and that's job sorted, isn't it? So we've got our 13 trees in there, 5 times 2.6 is 13, and that's the end of that one. None of the trees in the back are going to complete the histogram, so that's completed now. <coughs> okay, next one. We've got number 21, it's taking longer than normal. 21, 15 counters in a bag. There's an equal number of red counters, blue counters, and yellow counters. So there's five, and there's five, and then there's five. No other counters in the bag. Three counters are taken at random from the bag. Well, they're probably at, of taking one counter of each colour. So one counter of each colour, so it means you get a red, and then a blue, and then a yellow. Or you get a red, a yellow, then a blue. Or you get a what did you get then you can have a blue red and yellow or blue yellow and red or uh, start with yellow yellow blue red or yellow red blue probably have taken one count of each color so that's the only options we can have when we pull them out um, now they're all the same anyway so we've got red is 5 out of 15 times by the blue is 5 but there'll only be 14 counters left in the bag when you do that times by 5 yellow counters out of the 13 counters which are now left in the bag so that's going to be the probability for this one uh, all means adding um, probability and it's adding the same thing so it's 5 out of 15 when we start again there's still, uh, there's still 5 5 out of 14 this time um, times 5 out of 13 for blue Okay, uh, and then that's the same all the way along, plus 5 times 5 times 5 out of 15 times 14 and times 13. Uh, so that's that one, plus, and then the same routine again, so 5 times 5 times 5 plus 5 times 5 times 5 plus 5 times 5 times 5, 14, no, 15 the first one, and then 14 and then 13, and then 15, 14, 13. And then 15, 14, 13 equals. So we've got 5 times, uh, so we've got 125 on the top. 125 on the top out of 15 times 14 times 13 is 2, 7, 30. I'm going to probably take one card of each card so, like so far. <coughs> and then we want that 6 times, so I'm just going to multiply this side by 6. So we've got 125. Um, Divided by you know, 125 times 6, I'm going to do that, is 750 out of. Oh no, I can't write that, can I? So, oh yeah, 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 I thought that was right. Times 6 equals underneath, I meant 750 out of 2730. And then you can leave it like that, and that's the answer to the question. Uh, you can, of course, cancel the fraction down, but why would you bother doing that? It's a probability question, don't they? Cancel on probability fractions. Um, I certainly don't like cancel on factors if it doesn't ask me to. Solve this thing. So a quadratic, so a squared graph and a linear graph, uh, you're going to solve it by doing a substitution. So first of all, we need to figure out one of the letters. Um, I'm going to go for y. So 2y equals 6 minus 5x. So just take that off. Divide by 2. y equals 6 minus 5x over 2. Then I can take that and sub it in. So I get 2x squared plus 6 minus 5x over 2 squared equals 12 and uh, there's the substitution uh, so now I need to just work out with this one so I've got 2x squared plus and if I square that one so 6 minus 5x times 6 minus 5x is 36 uh, minus 60x plus 25x squared over 4 uh, now if you're not sure about that one just write that off to the side 
uh, you'll have 6 times 6 is 36, minus 5 times minus 5 is plus 25, and then you've got minus 5 times 6 is minus 30, and another minus 5 times 6 is another minus 30, which is where the minus 60 x, uh, x comes from, equals 12. Multiply everything by 4, so multiply that by 4 and that by 4, you get 8x squared plus 36 minus 60x plus 25x squared equals 48. Uh, so that's getting that 4 off the bottom by multiplying everything else by 4, and, and this thing, but that cancels a 4. Uh, that gives me 33, 33x squared minus 60x, and I'm going to bring this 48 off, bring it over this side, take away from that one, minus 12 equals 0. Uh, this thing now turns into just solving a quadratic, which is the, where the quadratic formula comes in useful. So x equals plus and minus, oh no, it's, no it isn't, it's minus b, plus and minus now, the square root, b squared, minus 4ac, all over 2a, where a equals 33, b equals minus 60, and c equals minus 12. So we get minus, minus 60, plus and minus the square root of minus 60, squared, minus 4, lots of 33, lots of minus 12, all over 2 lots of a, 2 lots of the 33s, uh, which equals, and you just grab your calculator and go for it. Uh, so we get the fraction button. So I get minus bracket minus 60 plus the square root of, in brackets, minus 60 bracket squared. Take away 4, lots of 33s, and then lots of minus 12s. All over 2, lots of the 33 equals, and I've got 2. <laughs> that was a nice answer. So 2. Or... So then you go back and you change it to a takeaway question. To there, delete, take away, and turns out to be minus 2 over 11, or minus 2 over 11. Uh, and then the y values, so the y is equal to, and I just write this underneath, so I run the 2 through this thing here. So I get 6, take away 10 is minus 4, minus 4 divided by 2 is minus uh, 2. Or, and this one I'm going to run the calculator, so now I've got a uh, fraction button, 6, take away 5, lots of that last answer that I had on the calculator, over 2, turns out what, or 38 over 11. And there's our answer to the question, so these two are matched up, these two are matched up, good score. Oh, another question, crap, oh there's loads. Right, so we've got some sort of uh, bounds question. Three significant figures, so it's rounded, so it's going to be 11.15 to 11.25, and it's going to be different lower bounds. By considering uh, by considering the bounds, I'm going to do the bounds, aren't I? Um, so I've got the lower bound, lower bound, uh, you get um, 1 over 5, D equals that one, times the smallest version you can get of that one, 11.15 cubed. On the calculator, so we've got uh, one. Oh no, 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 I've got. I'm just going to 11.15 cubed, or as cubed, uh, divided by five. So I'm going to write that one. So we've got 277.239175, and the upper bound. D equals one fifth of 11.25 cubed, uh, which equals. Let's try that one. 11.25 uh, cubed uh, divided by 5 is the upper bound of 284.765625. Now we're looking for what we'll both round to, and the only thing both the bounds will round to is actually 280. That rounds up to 280, this rounds down to 280. So uh, D is approximately 280 um, as both bounds round to 280 okay and that's the end of the paper quite a long one that one um okay wonder how many mistakes i made bye now